Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video with your boy Abe Shaw. As you can see by the title of this video, I know, I know, I know. It's been a minute since I gave you guys Sunday breakdowns. But I was like, you know what? We're going to start bringing it back. I'm for the month of November and kind of like starting out every Sunday. I want to do like a market breakdown on whatever pair y'all choose, right? So since I told y'all in the free single chat that I was like, hey, I'm going to give y'all a breakdown on US 30. And I didn't end up giving y'all that breakdown. I'm going to make sure this week I'm going to give y'all a breakdown. Uh, for US 30 and everything I'm looking for overall in the markets for that pair in particular now Continuing moving forward for every Sunday. I think I'm gonna do I'm probably gonna post like No, I'm probably gonna post like either Saturday or Sunday morning I'm gonna post on the community on the community section on the YouTube like I think on YouTube is like a section for like community where I make a post Right, and then on that post. I'm gonna say like hey, what's the free pair that y'all want? So that way I'm building engagement on the YouTube side and then instead of y'all having to worry about going to Instagram, because before I was posting on Instagram and TikTok, like, hey, let me know what post y'all want to post. And then um, I would, like, go based off of that. But now we're going to start going focusing more here on YouTube, focusing more, pushing on content for y'all, because I am actually about to start uploading and just pushing out way. I got so many videos that I haven't even finished editing to upload for you guys. So I'm going to make sure I start pushing that out, as well as providing more content for y'all as well. So between me focusing on y'all, on the YouTube family, and then just focusing more on my academy um, going into next month. It's going to be fun. So, without further ado, this is going to be a long intro. Let's hop right into the video and let's break down what we're looking for on the charts this week. And how you can make some cash. Alright, y'all. See you over there. Alright, what's going on, you guys? What's going on? So, now we're officially looking at the year study chart. And, bro, this month has truly, like... <laughs> Truly has been a blessing. Truly has been insane. Started off early in the month catching these swings for the buys. Right? Like, crazy. Hold on. Where is my arrow? That's not the one I wanted, though. Recently, whenever I get to try to teach on here, trade me tripping. So, market caught crazy buys up the swing, right? I was just really expecting for the month of October to be like a strong, a strong type of move. Because if we talk about how the market moves in quarters, if we go back to how it moved last October, the market was in a the downtrend. Then the month of October, it took off a crazy buy. And then ironically, though, we saw at the end of October, it started selling off to give us another setup for the buy. So maybe that could be what we're looking for today or this week. But then I want to go back another month. All right, let's go back another year, back in 2021. Same thing. Around October, the market was at a major support level, double bottom. And then it took off a long term buys for like the rest of the year. So this is really the first year where we've seen um technically the history did repeat itself. It did take off for those buys, but usually we're used to seeing continuation for the buys, pull back, and then continuation to the upside. Now we're seeing the market took off for the buys. Right, took off for the buys, came back to a major four hour key like retest spot for my people that use the fibs. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Um, we've been seeing like continuation of the doctrine. Now this could be like obviously everybody if you're watching this, you're probably thinking like what was the difference between like these past couple of years versus now? Government shutdowns, wars is going on, different um different basically like actually specifically really just the government government shutdowns and just the wars in general, those two alone is making the market go crazy because like bro, the economy, like they the government has no idea what's going on. They keep putting these different laws in place to like, like they basically trying to put a bandaid on a on a big wound right now until they figure out the issue, right? Between that, we got people that's getting removed from the house again, new people sworn in. All these different variables are playing a factor into what's happening into the market right now. While we're constantly seeing, for some reason, this market is overall, I would say, in a downtrend. Now, excuse me. Luckily for us. We're in the market, we're in the industry where we can trade both ways. So even though overall it has been in the downtrend, it has been a lot of opportunities to catch buys, to catch sales, catching 2,000 pips, 1,200 pips. Every single time the market decide, decided to go sideways in the market and consolidate. And that's essentially what we saw last week on the charts. Last week was really, you know, I was talking to my uh, people in the center chat, like, look, last week was really just a, a big old consolidation week on the charts, right? Like, we... It wasn't really moving for real. Like, if we talk about where the market was at on Monday, look, it was at the bottom of support. So what did we already do? 
we already knew to take buys off at that position. It came back. We found out where our resistance level was at. Ooh, once it came back inside the zone, like back around this area, we knew it was time to fill. Once it came back to support, we buy it. Once it came back to support, I mean resistance, if it failed to break out the zone, what did we know? Sell. So like it really showed us like the range that it wanted to play in between, which was around that 33, <clears throat> excuse me, 33,279 and then 32,900, right? That was the main range for the week. Now, out of nowhere, the news that happened on Thursday, and I believe it was, excuse me a second, news that happened on Thursday, and then the news that happened on Friday, I believe. Um, I can't even remember what exactly was the news that happened on Friday. Hold on, let's actually look real quick to see. What is the news? I don't trade on Friday, so that's the reason why I don't know. Before y'all get the like, I thought you was a trader. How you don't know what news happened on Friday? Because I don't trade on Friday. Let market do what it do. So, you have a consumer sentiment. That news came out, and then on Thursday, obviously, you guys know unemployment claims, and then all the extra, extra stuff happened to make the market move, right? So, as we talk about what we're looking for now, currently in the market, like it, Friday, Thursday to Friday, it was setting up to break out on Friday. Failed to close up inside the zone, and that's why we saw the Dow Jones. So now, I want y'all to start from a lock in with Let's focus, and let's see, what do we really have going on on this chart? What is really happening? What, what do we need to be looking for? <clears throat> the next major support or the main area will be somewhere in this range. Why am I having it right here? Because as you can see to the left of the chart, this is like where a whole bunch of wicks on the market is happening in that. And really, I hate when I, I love wicks only because I set bottom that wicks to give me like a sniper entry. Like that down, that's a body to give y'all. But also I hate it because like it, as far as it's in this range, if it actually does push in this range, you have no idea where the support level is because all this plays as uh, resistance. Really, you can go with well, support, which you can go based off of, though. If you want to go based on, I know some people go based off of the close of the candlestick. So technically, the candlestick actually closed at around 31,821. Technically, this area in particular, I'm mad at these lines are orange. I make my lines. I mean, I'm mad at these lines are red. I make my lines orange for my, my retest and stuff. But while it's at this level, you will know that, like, okay, bet this is the potential area that the market can push to and bounce off of it. And this is technically me looking at this from a day chart perspective. Do I want the market to come down here? Um, not necessarily. My preference and what I want y'all to look at first, like, do I want do I believe that it could potentially make its way here by the end of this week? Yes, it's not that far. It's um, let's see how many pips this is. Like this is definitely within US 30 range to drop a five thousand pips within a week if it really wanted to. Right? Like that's definitely possible. What I want to look for first, before we even talk about if it comes to this level, two things, right? So first, technically, I really want to see a full retest back to the zone that the market broke out of, right? But if I, before we even get that confirmation, we can really draw a line back to this level, right? Because this is here. This was technically, before anything, this was the previous zone. This was the overall previous zone that the market was in. It broke out of the structure. It gave us a nice full retest back to this area. This wick represents the area to let us know that the price of 32,581 uh, is the key price level. And then it took off for the buys again. Whole week, it was doing, it came back to close, then come back, took off for sales. We got consolidation, came back with a full retest on Friday. It broke through. So now, as we're going into the market this week, all I want y'all to look out for. Once the market actually decides that it wants to close back inside this zone, like come back out of the, come back above the price of 32,581, I want you to take buys back to the top of this retest level at this lower high. Because this is the main, this level right here is going to play as the key level that we want to look for for the full retest. This is going to determine, and not even determine, I would list, I would go as far as saying, if we get a retest, like we catch the buys back out the break, it gives us the full recess here. Nine times out of 10, the market is going to bounce off of this price when it comes back to this level, right? And it's going to reject. Now, technically, I could go as far as to say, before we even get to this point, it needs to close above this level because technically this is the most previous and lower high in the market at the time. But I'm thinking about the bigger picture in the main overall lower high that started the overall downtrend most recently. And that would be this area around 33,267. Now, See, it's one thing to give you a, like, kind of like break down my analysis, but it's another thing. I'm going to actually give you a, 
a trade. I'm going to actually give my similar chat people. So, once the market comes outside of this zone, you can take, let's say, buys around 32,655, right? And if you want to, if you want to wait for the one hour kind of to close officially, then that's totally fine as well, right? We already determined, we already understand that this entry at 32,581 is a key support level, right? So if it comes back outside the zone and it closes, oops, and it closes back outside the zone, it actually starts committing to that option. That's our confirmation that we need to know, like, okay, cool, you're all you're going to do, you're coming back to go back to the previous lower highs in the market. My main one that I said was technically all the way up here, but we also understand that this was originally the previous zone that it broke out of. You know, as I start to give you guys the TPs and stuff, you will know um, where you want to have a risk at, like where you want to actually set your, um, like your TPs at. I'm, I'm going to walk you through everything. So it's cool. I got y'all. Oh, uh, so this is what it's going to look like. Before you take this buy entry, stop loss is going to be 500 pips or it could be 50 pips depending on who your broker is. I know everybody's broker is different as far as like how the volatility goes. So look, what I'm looking for in the market is one of two things. We're going to see a break. It's going to touch price. I don't want you to enter. I don't want you to set buy stops when it touch price. I want you to wait, right? Wait until you either see a break, a retest back to the zone first. Then you enter that trade for the full move. That's going to be option one. Option two would be if you see clear as day that the momentum is actually just going and just taking off strong, like depending on like if it's happening during London session or red right side of New York, then you enter straight out the momentum and then you take that back to the other side as well, right? But as of right now, I want you guys to focus on, okay, it breaks out the trade. A told us to wait for it to actually come back to retest the same price level that it wants to break out of. And then if it does commit and hold, we take our buys back to the other side from here, right? And I'm not saying this is going to happen tonight. It's a possibility. Nine times out of 10, it could happen tonight. But sometime this week, we should be seeing that retest back to the other side. So TP1, I'm going to give you all this. Whoa, here we go. 360. Boom. TP1. TP2, TP3, TP4, 1200 pip move, boom. And this really technically takes you to the main lower high anyway before we even get to this one. That's crazy. But anything else I'm giving y'all is really extras, but it's cool because that's all you need. We'll level the 1200 pips. 1200, and then anything else after this is extra TPs that you can, if you want to hold it, if you clearly see the market is still going, cool. I'm letting y'all know right here, this orange line represents the retail line. So if it comes to this price and starts rejecting, it doesn't necessarily mean that the market isn't going to continue to go for the buy, right? Obviously, we know the market loves to have pullbacks in the market. And you got to understand when is the time that the market decides it has to pullback and understand why that the market is having a pullback. If you can't understand the why behind why the market is having a pullback, um, that's some homework that I'm going to give y'all and leave y'all with to like understand like, the retail and understand the corner to that, right? So... If you decide to hold a trade, right? So let's say the market does take off for buying. Boom. It smashed all of our TPs for 1,200 pips and it starts to reject. Now you understand, like, cool. One, you're moving, move your stop loss and profits. So that way now you're not risking nothing on the trade. All you're risking is your profits. And then two, now you understand that, cool. If the market comes back below, I would say, like, you can move your stop loss to TP2, right? Because if it comes, if it rejects, it's gonna, it's really gonna come back to retest somewhere in this level before taking off again. Or it's gonna be one of those cases where um where is this at? It's gonna be one of those cases where you know, a place where you thought it was a retest actually turned out to be a main move. And you can actually look for sales right here. All right. So I'm only gonna give y'all one setup for right now to ease this back in. Oh, let me actually. Save this for my documentation for later. Um, so this is gonna be like the first setup I'm gonna give you all for the buys, and then technically, if we get that full retest, you can take sales at the thirty three two sixty seven. And I'm gonna let you decide where you wanna set your TP two. But I, my, I teach my students always set it to the nearest support level, right? Where's the nearest? And I'm not talking about the main support level that you wanted to go to. I'm talking about the nearest support level, so that way you're not worrying about drawdown, like you're making money and you're catching your TP. But all right, y'all. That is officially the end of this breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll make sure to get back to them as quickly and as quickly as possible. So until next time, your boy is out.